Today's lesson is Jessica Chastain against all odds. Hi, everybody. My name is Roger, and I'm Helen. And we're continuing on with the month of August, and now we're going to talk about a Hollywood celebrity, an actress by the name of Jessica Chastain. And、uh, she was not born into a rich family. She had to work her way up from the bottom, and she has become quite successful and well known. That's right. Now you may not be familiar with her name, but you'll probably recognize her if you see her face because she has been in dozens of films, and she is a very versatile actor, which means that she's able to play a wide variety of roles. She can do comedy, she can do drama, and she can play strong, ruthless women and also more traditional women. So she's, in a few words, she's a very, very good actress. Indeed, and of course the title. Is against all odds, which means it was probably unlikely that she would succeed this way given her background. So we're going to talk about her very difficult beginnings as she was growing up in Northern California with a single mom and lots of siblings there. So let's find out how she went from rags to riches. Let's begin our lesson by reading the first part. Jessica Chastain against all odds. Oscar-winning actress Jessica Chastain has racked up an impressive list of film roles and awards over the last decade. However, it was against all odds that she made it to where she is today. The basketball team came back from being 20 points behind to win. 尽管困难重重，该篮球队从落后二十分反败为胜。另外，补充这个片语中的名词 odds， 意思是机会或是可能性。我们可以说 ，I guess the odds are not in my favor today, which is why I'm losing. 我想今天机会之神不眷顾我，所以我一直输。So the title of today's lesson is Jessica Chastain against all odds. Now, as Roger had mentioned before, this idiomatic phrase "against all odds" refers to success or the ability to obtain success despite the fact that the success is highly unlikely because of your background or because of some quality that you have that would make success very unlikely. So we often use this phrase for. For athletes, when athletes perform well, we can say that the athlete won or scored against all odds, against all of the factors that would make it seem impossible for him or her to succeed. Right. You see the word odds in gambling a lot. They talk about the odds of a certain horse winning a race or something like that. What are the odds? You know, the odds are eight to one or something like that, and you bet accordingly. Of course, we're not encouraging people to bet money, but、uh, it is. Is an example of the word odds here, and of course, it's against all odds. Yes, it was very unlikely that she would succeed because of her background. Let's move on now and talk about the first part. It says Oscar-winning actress Jessica Chastain has racked up an impressive list of film roles and awards. Over the last decade. Okay, so from this sentence, we can tell that she has won an Oscar. She won an Academy Award. So we say Oscar-winning actress. You could also call her an actor. It depends on the person if they want to be referred to as an actress or an actor. Both words are correct. And of course, here she's being referred to as an actress, and her name is Jessica Chastain. And she's racked up a list of film roles and awards. So here we've got the phrase to rack up, which means she has accumulated all of these accolades or all of these recognitions. That's right. So you can also say that a criminal has racked up many arrests against him. So to rack up just means to get a large number of something. Now Jessica Chastain has racked up many film roles and awards. 
sports. However, it was against all odds that she made it to where she is today. So we already talked about the phrase against all odds. Now here, to make it to where she is today simply means to arrive at the level of success or the fame that she has today. Right. Fortunately, she was able to become successful. But of course, it only makes me wonder how many other people out there in the world who are too poor could not make it to the top because they did not have the opportunities. So this, of course, is pretty spectacular here that she succeeded when the odds were against her and she has made it to where she is today. She has done it. She is successful. Okay, that brings us to the end of our introductory paragraph for today. Let's move on now and listen to the second part. Chastain's upbringing was far from the glamour of Hollywood. Raised by a single mother in Northern California, Chastain remembers nights when she and her four siblings had to go to bed hungry. Despite the difficult circumstances, Chastain was a lively child with an active imagination. When Chastain was seven years old, her grandmother took her to see Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. At the theater, Chastain saw a little girl playing make-believe for a living up on stage, became inspired and decided to pursue acting. The second part, we have seen the word glamour, as in beauty, attractiveness, or attractiveness. For example, the glamour of the movie industry is what draws so many young people to it. The film industry's glamour draws so many young people to it. Or Jenny went to a professional photographer to have some glamour shots taken. Jenny 找一位专业摄影师拍摄了一些很有魅力的照片。另外，补充这个字的形容词 glamorous, G L A M O R O U S, glamorous， 表示富有魅力的或是光彩夺目的。我们可以说 ，The glamorous model was dating a famous actor. 那名魅力十足的模特儿。与一位知名演员约会，也可以说 ，the award ceremony was attended by many glamorous guests. 颁奖典礼有许多光彩夺目的宾客参加。最后，我们看到单字 inspire， 这个字是动词，指激励、鼓舞或是激发灵感。例如 ，Leonard was inspired by his uncle's example and decided to enter politics. Leonard 受他叔叔的榜样启发。而决定从政，或是 a movie inspired Sandra to move to India for a year. 一部电影驱使 Sandra 搬到印度生活一年。另外，补充这个字的名词 inspiration. I N S P I R A T I O N inspiration 表示灵感。我们可以说 Megan was thinking about the problem when she had a sudden inspiration. Megan 思索这个问题时，突然有了灵感。So now let's look at Jessica Chastain's background. Chastain's upbringing was far from the glamour of Hollywood. So here, the word upbringing means the way somebody was raised, their childhood, how their parents raised them. So somebody could have a very strict upbringing, which means that that person's parents were very strict with them and didn't allow them to do a lot of things. But here we're talking about Chastain's upbringing. And how it was very far from the glamour of Hollywood. Glamour, of course, means bright lights and、uh, being famous and all those wonderful things, wearing fancy gowns and attending the Oscars and having lots of jewelry and lots of paparazzi chasing after you. So her upbringing. Was far from the glamour of Hollywood. It was not at all the same as Hollywood glamour. Raised by a single mother in Northern California, Chastain remembers nights when she and her four siblings 
had to go to bed hungry. So here she was raised in Northern California. If you're from the United States, Northern California usually refers to where San Francisco and Sacramento are, and then Southern California refers to where Los Angeles and San Diego are. So she was raised in Northern California, and of course she was raised by a single mother. So she did not have a father when she was growing up. Right, so she was raised by a single mother, and she had four siblings. Sibling means brother or sister. So when you have four siblings, it just means you have four brothers and sisters. It doesn't say how these four were divided between brothers and sisters, but she had four siblings. So she grew up in a large family, despite not having a father around. And many times she had to go to bed hungry, which suggests. That they did not have enough money for food, and sometimes the kids had to go to bed without any dinner. Right. So, despite means even though she had these difficult circumstances, that just means that even though she had this problem, she was still able to do something better later. For example, I could say, despite coming from a small town in Iowa, Tom is actually a very intelligent person. So here, of course, despite the difficult circumstances, she was still able to have an active imagination and move on to be a famous Hollywood actress. So yes, we have circumstances. Here, which means the conditions of your life. Of course, she was raised by a single mother. They didn't have many things to enjoy. They didn't have enough food. Maybe they were made fun of by other people in the town. So yes, she had those difficult circumstances. But despite them, she was still very lively. She was not depressed. She didn't let it get her down. She had an active. Imagination, and if you have an active imagination, that means you can imagine all sorts of things. Right. So I could say, for instance, that it's important to develop children's imaginations because children have a livelier imagination, and then as they get older, because of pressure to study and to find a job, they may lose that active imagination. So it's important to keep that imagination alive. And for the word circumstances here, which Was used to describe Chastain's upbringing. I could also say, for instance, these days we are still being very careful with socializing because of COVID. So I could say, under these circumstances, I think it would be better not to hold any parties or large indoor gatherings. Right. So again, despite the difficult circumstances that Chastain experienced when she was younger, she was actually a lively child and had an active imagination. And when Chastain was seven years old, her grandmother took her to see Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. I remember that many, many years ago. It was some kind of musical extravaganza or something like that. I did not see it myself. Have you ever seen this before, Helen? Yes, I did see it a long, long time ago on Broadway. It was on Broadway for a while, and it was quite a show, quite enjoyable. Right. So she saw that. Her grandmother took her to. See that, and at the theater, Chastain saw a little girl playing make believe for a living up on stage. Became inspired and decided to pursue acting. So yes, indeed, this happens a lot of times with young people when they go see a show or something. They get inspired. You see something and you're really attracted to it. You think it's really great, and then you use that to create other ideas for yourself. And those ideas usually mean you're going to pursue a career in the theater or in movies or things like that. Or maybe you're inspired to become a scientist or an astronomer because you went to see a speech by Carl Sagan or somebody like that. So in any case, here she did see that little girl, and the role involved the girl playing make believe for a living. If you Play make believe. You just imagine things. You imagine you're playing house, or you have an imaginary friend, or something. And that's basically what an actor does. They play make believe for a living. They're just pretending to be someone they aren't. They're acting. And she thought that was pretty cool because she had an active imagination, and she thought, "Wow, imagine pretending you're somebody, and you can make money doing that. What a great career!" And of course, this girl was playing make believe. She was acting a role for a living, and she was doing this. 
on stage. And if you're on stage, of course, you're acting in a performance that is on stage, as opposed to being on the screen. That's right. So when Jessica Chastain realized that people could make a living by playing make believe, she decided that she wanted to become an actor. She decided to pursue acting. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson. Let's move on now and talk about how her career took off after that. Once she'd set her sights on acting. Chastain rounded up her friends and formed her own theater troupe. They put on performances in their neighborhood and sold lemonade to buy props. In her teens, she worked at a performing arts school in exchange for acting classes. Eventually, she landed her first real onstage role as Shakespeare's Juliet. When she was later admitted to the famous Juilliard School, she became the first person in her family to attend college. So once she'd set her sights on acting, Chastain rounded up her friends and formed her own theater troupe. So we remember in the last section that Jessica Chastain went to see a show called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat and realized that people could actually make money, make a living from acting. So she set her sights on acting. When you set your sight on something, you have the intention of achieving that thing or getting that thing. So she had the intention of becoming an actor after she saw that play. Right. So of course she rounded up her friends and formed her own theater troupe. To round up means to gather together, and of course when you have a group of actors, we call them a theater troupe. Now they put on performances in their neighborhood and sold lemonade to buy props. This is kind of traditional in the United States. Sometimes kids set up a lemonade stand. They make lemonade and they sell it to passersby to make a little spare change. And so they set up a lemonade stand. And they use the money to buy props, which are things that you put on stage to recreate a scene, like、uh, fake trees or buildings or things like that. In her teens, she worked at a performing arts school in exchange for acting classes. So Chastain didn't have any money, probably, to pay for acting classes. So she worked at a performing arts school in exchange for acting classes. In exchange for means if I do something for you, then you give me something back in exchange. So she worked for the school in exchange for classes. I'll work there. If you let me take classes, eventually, finally, she landed her first real onstage role as Shakespeare's Juliet. Okay, so eventually means after a long time, this finally happened. She got or landed a role that was for the stage for a play, and she was going to be Juliet in the famous Shakespeare play Romeo and Juliet. That's right. And when she was later admitted to the famous Juilliard School, she became the first person in her family to attend college. So after working and taking acting classes at this performing arts school, she was admitted to Juilliard. To be admitted to something means to be accepted to a school or to some kind of organization that isn't very open to everybody. So you can't just go in and say. I want to take part. I want to join. You need to be admitted, which means you need to wait for those people to say, "Okay, we want you." So, high school students need to be admitted to college as well. And in this case, Juilliard is a performing arts school in New York City. That's quite difficult to get into, and a lot of famous actors and musicians have graduated from Juilliard. Indeed, I'm sure lots of people from Taiwan have attended Juilliard as well, and she became the first person in her family to attend college, which is a great achievement for a poor family from Northern California. We say this in America: if you go to college, it means you're attending university. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's turn things over to our beloved Chinese teacher. Hello, students. Welcome to Hanny. We're looking at today's 
杰西卡·切斯坦呢，在剧院看到一个小女孩在舞台上玩假扮游戏为生，受到了启发，那决定要追求演艺事业。文中是用到动词 inspire 去表达启发，我们来学习它的字首字根。好，首先看到 s p i r 这个字根，它表示呼吸。带有这个字根的 spirit， 在拉丁文里面就是指那种灵魂啊、勇气或者是活力、气息等等意思。好，那我们看到在 inspire 这个字当中，它的字首 i n 表示向内、往内 ，spire 表示呼吸。当我们在某人的心里注入活力跟勇气，也许就可以联想到 inspire， 它有激励啊、鼓舞的意思。那它也可以表达启发或者是赋予灵感的意思。好，顺便来补充几个有相同字根的单字。第一个是 expire， 它是由字首 e x 再加上字根 spire 而来的。那只是因为这个 x 和 s 产生的同化现象，所以我们才看到 spire 的部分它少了 s。好，那我们看到这个字首 e x 表示向外，然后字根 spire 表示呼吸。合在一起 ，expire 它就有呼气、吐气的意思。那这个字其实原本它还有断气、死亡的意思哦。我们就可以从生命结束去联想到 expire 它有到期、期满的意思。第二个补充的是 perspire， 它的字首 per 表示片极，那么 spire 表示呼吸。当我们流汗的时候，就好像在散热，把身体这个热气排出去，感觉就像是遍及全身的毛细孔都在呼吸排气，对不对？用这样的画面，也许可以联想到 perspire， 它有流汗、出汗的意思喽。好，那么第三个补充的是 respire， 它的字首 r e 表示 again， 再次 ，spire 表示呼吸。那么合在一起 ，respire 就是表达呼吸的意思啦。而它的形容词 respiratory 则是指跟呼吸道相关的，像 respiratory infection 就可以表达呼吸道感染了。好，在第四个补充的是 conspire， 它的字首 c o n 表示一起 ，spire 表示呼吸。我们从字首字根表面的意思来看，是一起呼吸。那同学们就可以用中文的成语“沆瀣一气”去联想说，当两个人臭味相投，同一个鼻孔出气，去联想说这个 conspire 它有同谋密谋的意思哦。再看到课文第三部分，有一个句子写道：“他们在附近演出和贩售柠檬水来购买道具。”文中是用 put on performances 去表达演出。好，偏语动词 put on， 它具有演出啊、举办或者是安排，像是安排这个表演啊、展览等等的意思。好，举例来说 ，Our class put on a talent show last week。我们班上礼拜办了一场才艺表演。那补充一下，如果是 put on a show。Put on a good show, 或者是 put on a great show， 它会有两种语义哦。一种是指表演成功、表现杰出；另一种则是比较负面的意思，就表示做戏，故意把情绪做很夸张的表现，像是 put on a show of being interested， 就是假装感兴趣。Put on a good show of sympathy, 假装很同情。那这种情况都是那种演很大的那种感觉。好，那以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单词吧。Sibling, Timothy has three siblings, a brother and two sisters. Despite, despite having no money, Jake decided to go out with his friends for the day. Circumstances. Her circumstances changed dramatically when she got a promotion. Imagination. The author has a great imagination, and his stories are never dull. Inspire. The coach inspired the team to play better in the second half of the match. Eventually, the hikers were eventually found after they had spent a cold night on the mountain. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you enjoyed reading along with us. I am Roger. I'm Helen. See, See you next time. time.